Hey guys, welcome back. It's your brother in Christ, Weston. Thanks for joining me today. So today's article comes out of Harbingers. Let's get into it. Okay, so I actually saw this article the other day and I never looked at it. Um, so I decided to right now. And uh, yeah, this is where we're at. So let's read. It says here, Pastor claims Jesus would bless the loving kindness of those who end pregnancies. Pastor claims Jesus would. So somebody saying that Jesus would actually bless this versus all the scriptures that go against killing the innocent, kneading in your mother's womb, protecting the children, right? Becoming like children. He would bless the loving, loving kindness of those who in pregnancies. That statement alone should scare you with the state of where people are at today. We've talked about it. I just had a video about Benny Hinn, multiple pastors, multiple mega church pastors, a lot of pastors that are coming out, and then other pastors saying this, whoever this is, um, on any side, whether it's a, a progressive or a, a non-progressive. Uh, both sides are crumbling with people who are committing atrocities or saying abominable things. So let's read. This is by Ken Ham on July 3rd, so two days ago. It says here, two headlines recently caught my attention. Both were utterly shocking and a good reminder of Jeremiah 14, 14. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto a false vision and divination, a thing of not and of the deceit of their heart. You know, your heart's going to speak. You know, the heart is of the flesh and it needs to be changed. This is the thing that actually needs to be changed, right? Because wherever your heart, wherever your treasure is, there your heart is also. So whatever you idolize in here, whatever you're treasuring, your heart is placed in that. And the Lord says, if it's not in me, then it's an idol. So let's continue. The first headline featured statements from a female pastor who previously bragged about killing, excuse me, un we're going to say unaliving or ending the, the, the potential lives of two children in um, hitting the abort button, who preached that if Jesus were giving his sermon on the Mount today, he might add, he might add, blessed are those who end pregnancies, for they will be known for their loving kindness. How? And it says blasphemy, such blasphemy. And it is, it, how can you stand behind a pulpit, anybody, or even get behind a camera and say, Jesus would say this, even though he didn't say this, Jesus, and she said, he might add, you are, you are, oh my, it's, it's a, it's a, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. To speak for the Lord, knowing that there are people who've spoken for the Lord and spoken absolute lies, false false gospels, heresy, false doctrine, um, uh, talking about Jesus said this or God said this or the Holy Spirit said this, and they didn't actually hear the Lord. They heard their flesh of their own hearts, the tickling of their ears. And, and God sounds like his word. So if you're hearing the Lord, he's going to sound like his word verbatim where every comma and every dot is perfect, every period, every bold statement, every sweet statement, every uh, uh, statement that talks about sin and, and unaliving people and hurting people and shame and guilt and anxiety and promises, they're all going to sound the same. So when you start saying stuff like this, that is an immediate red flag for anybody. It says here, so many verses of scripture come to mind, but consider the third commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not, will not hold him guiltless ugh, that taketh his name in vain. That is the very definition of taking the Lord's name in vain, hitching Christ to an evil cause to deceive others and to breaking another commandment. You shall not murder. Exodus 20, 13. God will not hold her guiltless, meaning he will hold her guilty, of her attempt to put words into his mouth. Think of the, the, the creation taking the words and shoving it in God's mouth and then saying, eat it. Here you go. This is what you said. How gross that sounds. How graphic that sounds. To put words into his mouth to lead people astray. The other headline also featured a pastor. I use that term loosely in both, both of these cases, which I would as well who dressed in Star Wars cosplay, claimed that pride and the theology of Broadway 
our big seasons at the University Christian Church. I have no idea what this means um, or what's going on here. Yes, he actually compared the month-long celebration of sexual sin and pride to the actual Holy Week. Uh, celebration of Christ's death for our sin and his resurrection from the grave. More blasphemy. It comes as no surprise that he also went on to make some more blasphemous claims about Jesus and Star Wars. So you're claiming, like I get it, Star Wars, right? So like there's something to that, like stars, like Nephilim or angels, Star Wars that are coming down and fighting, right? There's something to that. Um, I get that. How that works with, you know, Luke, you know, uh, being the, the chosen one, right? Um, uh, I don't even, I don't even know. I don't know where you're, where you're getting, you know, adding that a pride week or a demonic month or a whole, whatever to not even a demonic month. It's just people who make it that June is a great month. It's that people are just, you know, slap a name on it and they claim it for themselves. Um, and how you relate that to Jesus and sexual sin and, and that, or the sexual sin of that and Star Wars to Jesus. I don't know. I don't know how you get there. I don't even know how you arrive there. What a state the woke church is in. Well, the woke church is not the true church. Compromise with the world and thinking of today's uh, today abounds. Now, these compromises are very obvious. The lies are right out in the open, and it should be. You should know your Bible well enough to know scripture with scripture that, that the Bible is already set in stone. The canon is done. There's no more scripture being added into it. So whatever here is already infinite in its finite space, meaning it will speak forever and it's done with everything that needs to be talked about that will come, that has happened, that will happen, and will ha that has happened, happening now, and will happen. So past, present, and future. We are living through the Bible. The Bible is a, a book from the future and the past and right now. Um, uh, and the majority of Christians can see them for what they are, deceptions from the enemy. But most compromise is much more subtle and in your face compromise usually starts out with subtlety. Right, true. Christians need to be equipped to recognize and answer the subtle compromise, keeping their thinking aligned with God and his word. It's very simple. So um, this is a quick one. I don't want to go too too deep into this because this is something that we can, I can talk about for hours, just about the, the sufficiency of scripture, the sufficiency of God's word, knowing God's word, spending time with the Lord, and, and even yourself saying, I'm not aligned here. I need to align here. I am... I am failing here because God has a standard and I'm not meeting that. And I know he's going to have grace to help me and shape me and mold me and conform me to the image of Christ by walking these, these things out, getting rid of this stuff and bringing in these new things that are going to help me continue to operate this way. But knowing and knowing for yourself that you you say, hey, um, I don't agree with this because it's sin and I commit sin and I don't agree with my own sin. See what I'm saying? And that is a standard given by somebody who's outside of us, who's far greater than us, who is God, who we can't even imagine or comprehend. And yet he makes it plain to us what is right and what is wrong. And this is clearly wrong. So anyways, guys, that's the video. If you like the video, be sure to give me a like. If you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.